Good morning. morning. Welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Traverse City. Uh, My name is Jordan Starkenberg. I'm the associate pastor here. And uh, what a beautiful day it is to gather together in worship. Uh, I'm so grateful for this opportunity for all of us to come together. I pray that in this time and space, we all have that opportunity to sense God's belonging and God's love. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, We've got uh, some of us of the church are still down at Camp Henry for the All Church Retreat. Um, Some of you might have even seen some pictures getting put up on Facebook and whatnot um, already. If you haven't seen them yet, be sure to check that out. There's a lot of fun action shots. Somebody was already wondering, am I doing okay? Because in one picture I'm on the, fallen on the ground. Um, I am okay. They were, I was told to do a funny picture and my brain went just to uh, fall over. So I, I don't know, but, but I'm doing okay. Everybody was good as, as far as I know since I was there last night. But, uh, uh, so they, they worship with us in spirit this morning as they are also gathered together uh, for Sunday morning worship and even to receive communion along with us. So. Uh, What a joy that is. Uh, Well, friends, let us continue to gather and center our hearts in worship. morning. Please join me in a call to worship. If you come into this place with the hope of growing deeper, connecting, and glimpsing God, and if all those things take place, and your spirit is moved, and you swear God is near, and you feel more lucky for the gift of faith, and then the service comes to an end, and it's time for you to leave, and you ask yourself, where do we go from here? then I would say to you, go out into the world to love and to share and to learn, but come back soon, because this is the beginning. This This is is only the beginning. So come in, fill your cup here, be present. God is here. Let Let us worship worship God.
One thing about confession is it allows us to claim that we are works in progress. And there is beauty in that. You don't have to be perfect here. You don't have to have it all figured out here. You don't have to have your five-step plan for what's next. You just have to show up with your messy, beautiful self and be honest. So friends, let's be honest. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Holy God, we are naturals when it comes to stalling out. We reach a certain point in the relationship, in the conversation, in our faith, and then we stall. We buy property on the top of the plateau and build a house there, destined to never dig deeper or climb higher. Forgive us for giving up on the things that matter. Forgive us for confusing the plateau with the mountaintop. Forgive us for taking the easy way out instead of doing the hard work of curiosity, relationship building, vulnerability, and connection. Inspire us to see new paths for where we can go from here. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Friends, hear these words of God's forgiveness. Family of faith, we are works in progress, but we are works in progress designed, created, and claimed by God. No matter what you have done or left undone this week, today is a fresh start. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. God is with me on the mountaintop, and God is with me on the plateau. I am loved claimed and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hear now the prayer of illumination. Holy God, we know that you are always speaking through strangers and friends, through sunrise and sunset, through random acts of kindness and feelings that stir hope awaken us. We know that you speak through dreams and prayers. Through it all, small voice and burst of overwhelming joy. We know that you are always speaking but we also know that we are inclined to miss it. Settle our spirits now to hear your word fully. We want to be part of the conversation. Gratefully, we pray, amen. Uh, scripture today comes from Psalm 146. If you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, you can find it on pages 451 and 452 in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they will return to the earth. On that very day, plans perish. Happy are those who help, whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. 
who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord opens eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, all, for all generations. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. 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 Amen. Thank you. At this time, I want to invite the young and the young at heart to meet me down in the center. I think a lot of our young are at Camp Henry this morning in another worship service, so we can't blame them for that, can we? <laughs> uh, but let's get a handful of folks to meet me down there. Now I'm actually going to pause you from sitting. Don't sit down just yet. We're actually going to convene in this space over here. Oh. Yep, sorry. I have a confession to make. I know we already did confession, but I forgot one. Uh, I didn't really bring you up here to teach a lesson so much as complete a task. Sorry. Okay, here's how it's going to work. Everybody? This is a pretty difficult project. We need to get this stick on the ground. Pretty hard, I know. Uh, but everybody crowd around the stick. Come together. Now everybody needs to put um, both hands, I need your index fingers resting underneath the stick, okay? So crowd around both sides, there we go. 
All right, now, the one rule you have to follow is that you have to keep both your fingers, or your single finger if you have a child, that's valid. <laughs> you have to keep those fingers touching the stick at all times. You cannot release your touch from the stick, okay? Now, everybody together, it's a simple project. Just lower the stick to the ground. Ready? Ready, set, go. Get out of the way. Oh, we're going overboard here. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Yay! All right, now you may come take a seat. Good job, everybody. All right, how was that experience for you? Yeah, all you had to do was put a stick on the ground and it took like a full minute. What's going on there? Yeah, it, at first it was floating up. What's the deal with that? Did you not listen? Down. <laughs> yeah, what, what was difficult about that? It took cooperation. We weren't talking, okay. It was kind of veering sideways at one point. I was, it was getting like titanic at some point. What else? What else made that difficult? Okay, not all, yeah, so we all had differences, right? So that made it complicated to work together. <laughs> that is valid. I, I was thinking about kids when I planned this, so you know. <laughs> they have less distance to go, too. Uh, so what, what did it require of you to finally complete the task? You had to cooperate, okay. You had to listen well to others. I know some people were starting to give some advice, as in down, not up. <laughs> what else? What else was required of you to complete this task? Okay, yeah. Because you might have, after those first few seconds, you might have thought, oh, forget this, you know? You had to persevere, right? Yeah, well, friends, let me tell you, this is a microcosm of our entire lives. Uh, when we have to work with others, when we have to stick together as a group, life gets complicated. Uh, we run into obstacles. We have differences that make it complicated. We have a hard time communicating. Um, and sometimes we have our own limitations, right, that make it hard for us. So. The, the thing to take away with this is that truly we do need to communicate and to encourage and to persevere through those obstacles, okay? We are just about to hear a Bible story that exemplifies this in a beautiful way. So I encourage you to listen well, okay? So let's pray together. You can repeat after me, everybody. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for bringing us together. Help us to stay united and show love for each other. And show love for each other. Even when the going gets tough. Even when the going gets tough. Amen. Amen. All right, you can head back to your seats. Thank you for humoring me. Our second passage for today comes from Ruth 1, verses 1 through 19a. That can be found in your pew Bibles on page 187 of the Old Testament. In the days when judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malin and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. And she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malin and Kilian also died. 
so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. When she started to return to her daughters-in-law from the country, then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought that there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No. My daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. And they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. So she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. The word of the Lord. Back in the spring of 2019, uh, Ray and I got invited by some friends to go on a rock climbing trip down to Red River Gorge, Kentucky. Our little friend group at the seminary had gotten super into rock climbing that year, and Ray found that she was really, really good at it, just right off the bat. She was a natural. I, on the other hand, found out uh, that my body was not made for rock climbing, Something about the mass or the density, I don't have the equation, I don't know. But at any rate, I was happy to take on the encouraging soccer mom role of the group. So I packed the snacks, I brought the sweaters, I set up the little picnic area by the rock wall. It was a great time. We had a good few days. Uh, there was one complicating factor, which was that we brought our dogs with us. So at this time, we had two dogs. We had our first dog, Bear, that we had had for four years already, and Bear was a saint, trustworthy and cuddly and playful and smart. But just that spring, we had also just gotten a second dog, Charlie. Charlie is different than Bear. Uh, she's just a little, little nine-pound Yorkie. We still have her. Cooper's actually watched her this weekend while we were in Camp Henry. Uh, she's a little bit skittish at times and, and very loving, but, but aloof. Um, and while Bear could be kept off the leash in the wilds of the Red River Gorge, we found out the hard way that Charlie was not quite ready for that same level of autonomy. Uh, so we were hiking our way through the thick woods, and on the way back from a day's hike, we were on this edge of the forest ridge with this really steep decline right on one side, leading into a really deep, dark valley full of thick brush. And all the dogs in our party were off leash, not just ours, everybody's. And just then, Charlie saw a squirrel run across the path and down, down, down into the valley. And what did she do? Why, of course, she took off after it. Side note, did you know that Yorkies have an incredibly strong prey drive. We didn't know that at that time. 
Uh, turns out that was bred into them a very long time ago so that they could effectively hunt for rats and other varmints in the cellars of Yorkshire. The more you know. Anywho, Charlie took off like a shot down into the brush and we started calling out for her to return and she didn't say anything in response. Uh, all we could hear was the echoes of crunching leaves and twigs getting further and further down that valley. So I started to go in after her. Well, it turns out a lot of that thick brush was thorny brush. And anything that wasn't thorny was poison ivy. But uh, I kept going. I was getting small glimpses of Charlie far below me into the valley. And finally, I got down, down all the way to the valley floor, where it was not only thorny and brushy, but now also swampy. After a few moments of scrambled searching, there I saw her, little nine-pound Charlie, just surrounded by the thorns and brush and cold water, shivering, looking around, not knowing where to go. And I made my way through the brush to her, and I bent down to pick her up. And just then, there was a rustling in the bushes, just a few yards away. Our heads shot up as we saw what entered into the clearing. Bear. Oh, sorry, not a bear, our other dog, Bear. <laughs> Our other dog, Bear, had followed us all the way down into the valley, through the nasty brush into the swamp to join me in making sure that his new sibling, Charlie, was found and taken care of. So I picked up Charlie, and the three of us climbed our way back up onto the trail. And from that point on, we pulled out a six-foot bungee strap leash, and we strapped Charlie directly to Bear. <laughs> because that way she could still have a nice six foot of radius for exploration, but she could not pull him very far because he was three times her size. Regardless what we encountered from that point on, wherever we were going to go, we were going to go together. And it feels as though Ruth, in this morning's story, is doing a similar thing. After a season of tragedy, where Naomi went to great lengths to try to convince Ruth to leave and return to her own people and country and custom, uh, and to, to leave her to her own destined life of poverty and grief and isolation. But Ruth would not have it. She clung to Naomi. Literally, she swore an oath that nothing would separate them. Wherever they were going to go, they were going to go together. Biblical scholar Patricia K. Tall, she suggests that Ruth's actions in this story are an echo or maybe even an embodiment of God's very love and grace that are present and available to all of us, even if we don't sense it at first. And in the midst of pain and longing and unanswered questions, Ruth clings to Naomi's shuddering shoulders in the same way God surrounds us in the many seasons of life. In the same way, the trusty trail-wise dog might remain tethered to the one that needs a little more direction now and then. And as we as a church continue to think about how we relate to this planet and to our neighbors and to one another, I wonder how Ruth's words and actions can be for us a model to live by. Because it does not come naturally or easily. It is often so tempting for us to respond to conflict or tension or hard seasons by creating distance, by checking out. But Ruth is a testimony of what can happen if we are willing to lean in instead. When we cling to one another in the crossroad moments and go wherever we go together. Churches, I have another confession to make, whew, Churches are not necessarily known for being good at this. Uh, we tend to split over our practices and our theology, our strained relationships, our politics, and of course, who gets to pick the hymns. <laughs> that is our legacy. <laughs> and our division, our choice to isolate from one another over those things is a death to grieve. But when we unite and when we come together through the bonds of love and grace, that is power. That is a power found in the process of getting to know each other more, 
through courage and curiosity and compassion. And we need it if we want to cling together and move forward into the uncharted territories of this country, this world, the next several years. There's so many unknowns right now. And we have a church have a lot to do to discern our path forward and what God is calling us to try or to experiment with for the sake of loving and serving the future generations. So we do well to start that discernment with a commitment, not even to the work, but to each other. To follow the example of Ruth and cling tightly. To lend that ear or that hand, especially when the going gets tough, when the path is all thorns and swamps. Because when we have that foundation, that reassurance that where we go, we go together, we can face the future with that much less worry and preoccupation. We can look forward with ease when we know someone's got our back. As a church, with that sort of web of connection in place, we can experiment and try new things without falling into an identity crisis. We can go where God calls us to go, here and now, without the pressure to try to be something we once were. Oh, to be a church embodying that love and that grace of God like our sister Ruth. With courage and curiosity enough to say to one another, where you go, I go. Where you stay, I stay. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. So where do we go from here? We've already got some ideas, a lot of good things in the works. But who knows how the Lord will speak into it, will breathe energy into it. And whatever path we go on, we're going to go together. Amen? Amen. 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 You may be seated. At this time, we have the exciting opportunity to commission our mission trip participants for this year. They head out next week, uh, but with some of them leaving before church next Sunday, uh, we got to commission them now before they're gone. So at this time, I want to invite everyone who's going on the uh, mission trip next week to, to stand up and join me 
Uh, let's line up behind the font uh, facing out. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all are one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, we are called by God to be a church of Jesus Christ. A sign in the world today of what God intends for all humankind. The great ends of the church are the proclamation of the gospel, the salvation of humankind, the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, the maintenance of divine worship, the preservation of the truth, the promotion of social righteousness, and the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. The call of Christ is to willing and dedicated discipleship. And our discipleship is a manifestation of the new life we enter through baptism. Discipleship is both gift and commitment, offering and responsibility. So mission trip attendees, the grace bestowed on you in your baptism is sufficient for your calling because it is God's grace. By God's grace, we are saved and enabled to grow in the faith and to commit our lives in ways that serve Christ. God has called you to this particular service at Cass Community. So show your purpose by answering these questions. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will, with God's help. Do you welcome the responsibility of this service? Because you are determined to follow the Lord Jesus, to love neighbors, and to work for the reconciliation of the world? I do. Will you serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit? I will, with God's help. Amen. The next two questions are for you, the congregation. Do you, members of the Presbyterian Church of Traverse City, confirm the call of God to our mission trip attendees in the service of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do. Will you support and encourage them in this ministry? Amen. Thank you. At this time, we will offer a prayer uh, for those attending the trip. Um, I want to invite you, if you feel comfortable, uh, to extend a hand of blessing um, just as a symbol of your uh, affirmation of their call. And I invite all of you to, um, if you want to put a hand on another's shoulder, um, we'll be praying for one another. Let's pray. Faithful God, in baptism, you claimed us. And by your Holy Spirit, you are working in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading our mission trippers to this time and place. Establish them in your truth. Guide them by your spirit, that in your service they may grow in faith, hope, and love, and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Friends, receive this blessing as you go. May the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole be being, spirit, soul, and body, free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. You can take a seat. Here at this, oh, first, <laughs> uh, we have to do our offering. So the story of Ruth and Naomi is the story of God working through people. 
Naomi needed Ruth to make it back home and start fresh. Mary needed Elizabeth. Jesus needed disciples. Moses needed Aaron. And the story of our faith is the one that constantly reminds us that we cannot do this work alone. So in community, we ask ourselves, where do we go from here? And the one answer to that question that we give is that we can give what we can from what we have and trust that God will continue to move us closer to that promised day. So family of faith, I invite you now to give your tithes and your offerings now, knowing that this is the work of the community. This is the work of faith. So let us give. And as we receive this morning's offering, I want to share a couple updates on some of the life and ministry of our church together, as our financial giving is only one way we are an active church. Uh, I did want to highlight our final numbers from the extravaganza two weeks ago. Everything got processed and sent through, and I'm very excited to share that, bottom line, we raised over $19,500 at the extravaganza. So. And just yet again, a huge thank you to everyone and anyone who participated, the team that put it on, the, the folks who volunteered uh, auction items, those who showed up. <laughs> uh, we are so thankful for everyone who, who made that possible. And we look forward to discerning how that is something for our toolkit in the years to come as needs continue to arise. Next up, I want to highlight the Walk for Water. So this is something our church has done for several years. This year, it's especially exciting that we are getting back to actually doing the walk together as a group uh, that happens on Saturday, May 18th. Um, but we do have a special promo code now if you have not signed up for the Walk for Water yet. Um, it's Empower Moms, all caps, and you get $10 off your registration. Uh, uh, Cynthia is here this morning. She's in her bright orange Walk for Water shirt. And she has a table out in the narthex. She would love for you to come ask questions. Uh, she's got lots of information about uh, World Vision and the Walk for Water, why we commit to it. Uh, we'd love to have you join us on that beautiful Saturday for a walk together uh, to support a great cause. Uh, so please consider that and check in with Cynthia after church. Finally, just a quick note. Uh, our pastor, Julie Delazine, is now officially installed. We are, we are super excited for that. And she is now taking a well-deserved, I can't say break, it's not a break, she's on study leave. <laughs> but it's a well-deserved study leave. So from Camp Henry, she's off uh, to Montreat out in the East Coast, and she'll be back next week. So uh, Reverend Peter Moore is, will, will be gracing your presence here in the sanctuary next week uh, before she gets back. And then I wanted to highlight that May 19th is a really beautiful Sunday in the life of this congregation. It's Pentecost. We celebrate the Holy Spirit that day. And uh, in alignment with that, we also celebrate our graduates and our confirmation students becoming full members of the church. So a big, beautiful Sunday on May 19th. We have nine confirmands this year. It's a really incredible thing uh, coming together. So be sure to join us. At this time, I want to invite our servers of communion forward to the table as we prepare and pray. Here at this table, all people are invited, no matter what you've done or left undone. Here at this table, we wear our hearts on our sleeves. At this table, we are free to tell God the truth of our lives, where it hurts, what we need, where we're from, and where we hope to go. And at this table, we're not alone. We are surrounded by community, surrounded by connection. So come to this table with your courage and your fear, with your curiosity and your doubt, with your hope and your vulnerability. God is here, and there is a seat saved for you. You guys can have a seat. Let's pray. God of conversation, we are here trying to be courageous. We are trying to be curious. We are here trying to build connection in a lonely and isolated world. We want to be somewhere other than here. We want to be standing in a place and time that is closer to your promised day, where all are fed, where prisoners are freed, where the homeless are housed, and every person knows their worth. And we know we can't get there without honest and vulnerable conversation. But we don't always know how to ask. We fear saying the wrong thing, we fear offending, so we eat our words and stay quiet, hoping answers will come, but they don't always come. Connection has never been quite so easy for us. So today, God, we ask for your words. Plant questions in us that, like seeds, grow into a garden of connection. 
plant affirmation in us that, like laughter, is contagious and mood-changing. Plant curiosity in us that, like rain, washes away any judgment we carry, replacing it with a desire to understand. And when we have your words in our mouth and our mind and your mind in our hearts, then teach us how to listen. Teach us how to hear the message under the words, the grief, the hurt, the fear, the shame that hangs under sentences. Help us to hear and make space for unspoken truths. Then teach us how to listen to the voices that differ from us with different opinions and histories and perspectives so that like Ruth and Naomi, we might move through disagreement and ultimately find you. God of conversation, we are here, and it is easier said than done, but we need you like we need this community. We need the sunrise every morning. So draw near to us. Teach us how to speak. Teach us how to listen. Teach us how to find you in the spaces between the words and our ears. And as you do, hear and receive these prayers. Friends, what prayers do we have this morning that you would like to lift up into this community? Your joys or concerns on your hearts and minds. Go ahead and speak them out. Amen. <laughs> prayers for good news for the Morrisons all around. Continued prayers for Elliot's healing. Other joys or concerns you'd like to share today? Yeah. Prayers for Marilyn who is going through stem cell. Prayers for all teachers. Prayers for endurance for teachers. Oh boy. Absolutely. Prayers for those caught in the middle. Paul. Gratitude for your church family as they surrounded you in the passing of Maxine. Continued prayers for you, Paul. I offer a prayer for uh, Tina Lane, had a surgery this week, so prayers in her recovery. Prayers for the U of M graduates. I'll even extend it to say for all of our graduates. Prayers for them as they transition. Holy God, meet us at this table with open arms and holy conversation that we might catch a glimpse of you in this meal and be changed. God of conversation, we have been meaning to ask, where do we go from here? How do we speak truth? How do we listen for you? Guide us, be with us, hold us, unsettle us, catch us, feed us, fill us. Meet us here, God, for we are open. Pour into us. Gratefully, we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he handed it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. So whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. 
We will commune by intinction this week. Uh, so, so how that will work is this side, you will come down this center aisle and receive communion, and then you will head out um, on your, your outer wing. Same here, you come through this center aisle and return on the outside. Uh, you'll, you'll take a cube of bread, dip it in the cup, and receive the elements right there. If you need us to come to you, uh, we would love to. Uh, just raise a hand or let an usher know, and we will send a team back uh, to serve you as well. So these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So come, for all things are now ready.
Please join me in our prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Family of faith, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumption, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. In the name of God, our great connector, who is love itself, may the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Go in peace.